Uh, hello, my name is Tian Tian Shi. I'm a junior in Franklin Marshall College and majoring in psychology and my minoring in sociology. So the paper I will be presenting today is in the title Research on the Impact of Cultural Values on Social Interaction in Chinese Education. Um, before talking about the papers and details to you all, I want to share an formal results that I conduct when I chat with my friends. So I asked 10 of my Chinese friends that the most frequent saying they heard from their parents and combined with the sharing on the media. Here's are the top four sayings. Um, the first one is why other children can do it, but you cannot. And the second one is what are your parents? And we are your parents and we are always right in the family. And the third one is we work so hard every day and save money for a future, but you do not listen to us. And the last one is you are worse than other children, but we still raise you up and we love you. Um, I believe many, like the majority of Chinese kids are familiar with those sentences and they almost accompany us for the entire use. And maybe most of us had already immune to those sentences because we had heard it for like so many years in our life. And, but I'm not sure like how you guys feel about this sentence if you first heard about them. Um, for Chinese kids, um, we find those sentences really repressive and suppressing, and we will refuse to hear them when we are having a conversation with our parents. Like, but many of us did not recognize what is the meaning, mean problem under those sayings. So if we examine those sentences closer, we would find out that they have one thing in common, which is the moral kidnapping. I want to bring the problem behind the Chinese education to the stage and closely examine them. So therefore, the study aims to highlight the issues in Chinese education concepts and point out how those are influenced by cultural values and psychological concept of mind control. So the phrase cultural values is usually determined by a com community better than the individuals. So for each culture, the cultural values varies based on that culture's history and beliefs. And for Chinese people, a cultural, cultural values are largely developed and passed on from ancient China to modern times, which we refer to as Confucianism. And it lays the foundation of today's Chinese cultural values. So it is a philosophy and belief system founded by Confucius in ancient China, and it emphasized the importance of good moral character and creating a strict hierarchy in different kinds of social interactions. So the good moral character could include respect, kindness, altruism, um, and many other good qualities that you can think of. And Confucianism set a foundation of Chinese education since it saw education as a moral education that mainly cultivated students to be a good human beings. And from Confucius' perspective, a good human beings is to have the good moral characters that I mentioned before and follow the street hierarchy. So the first theory that I want to discuss today is the theory of identity control theory raised by Burke in 2007. It can help us understand the reason behind the social interaction between children and parents or other authorities that children are interacting with regarding the, based on the Chinese education systems. So there are four components of this theory. So the first one is identity standard, which is the meaning of the given identity. And the second one is the perception, which is defined as how people see ourselves in relation to our identities. And the third one is comparator, which is to compare the perception with the identity standard. And the last one is discrepancy. So it is the difference between the perception and the identity standard. So if the discrepancy is zero, which means there's no problem between identity standard and the perceptions. So it is corresponding with each other. So if it is not zero, there will need some adjustments to make the discrepancy back to zero, which means there will need some actions to make the difference. And it can be used to determine whether one's behaviors correspond to the identity that one belongs to and to see if any changes need to be made.
And to better understand the theory within the context of Chinese education, I would apply to the Chinese families and use some examples to help us understand it. And within a typical family, we've got a parent, um, mother, father, and child. So each individual within the families perform their role according to how they perceive their identity, which refers to the perception that we have discussed before. And but apparently different people have different perceptions regarding to their identities, but there should be an identity standard that according to the theory, and now who is going to determine the identity standard? And the answer should be the parents because they have the authority within the social interaction. And from their perspective, their kids should behave in the way that follows the standard that they made and they define and how should, how like the, they define how a child should behave. Therefore, like it leads to the outcome that children in the family usually usually behave in a way that violate the standard because children will have a different perspective on how they should behave. For example, I think from my perspective as a child, I think I can have the right to decide my life and have a for example have a rest after a whole day of school. But my parents will say I will need to do homework right after school and. But my, like, here comes the comparator and discrepancy that our definition to how a child should behave is different. Then it leads to the discrepancy of non-zero and which leads, which then leads to a broken social interactions. And then someone would, some people would ask like, why are the parents the authority? And so here comes the connection to the Confucianism that I want you to, like introduce the word filial piety, which means the devotion to family. And um, this means that like the Confucius emphasizes the idea of parental authority and the importance of being respectful, respectful to other members. Therefore, parents would think that the behavior like violating their standard, like as a disrespectful and not devoting to families, and additionally, the idea that parents are equal to authority has already become a social norms of China, and which means it has a like commitment and agreement on these like parent equals to authority, and therefore the like during the process of social interactions between parents and children and arguing the identity standards between them, parents usually use their power, status, authority to like suppress their children and make comment on them, like on any decisions or behaviors that children should do. And this leads to a psychological terms, mind control, which is the second concept that I want to introduce today. So the term has become really popular this year in China. So the term PUA is the acronym of pickup artist, which is usually used in a romantic relationship that refers to manipulative and psychological skills that make others question themselves. And the term has been widely used in other circumstances, like between family, within schools, to show the intention that someone tried to manipulate control what others think by telling them their own beliefs and values and try to persuade others to behave in the way to obey them. So remember the four sayings that I mentioned in the beginning, I had categorized the mind control to the four categories. And the first category is that parents would emphasize their payoff and moral kidnapping their children to obey. So the typical saying is like, we provide you with every meal and a place to live. So you must listen to us. And for me personally, the initial feeling that I heard is guilt and I will reflect on myself that am I that bad and am I that burdensome to the families. So in this criteria, parents use the method of moral kidnapping to trigger their children's emotions of guilt and make them obey their commands. And the parents think it is how the children should behave to show respect to them. And the second criteria is to, to make comparison with other kids like parents want to tell their children 
that others are better than them and they should learn from those children. But actually from, a from, a from children's perspective, it will not trigger any motivations to study or to do anything, any, anything else. So the only thing that I will have is like, I will, I will doubt myself and have a sense of hostility toward those children that my mom is like, my parents is comparing to like, it will also let children feel really sorry for their parents and obey what they say in the future. And the third criteria is to emphasize the hierarchy between parents and their children, like saying like, we are your parents and we are always right in the families. So in this circumstance that the parents emphasize their speech priority in the family so that the children cannot say anything against them. And usually the parents will deny their children's requests and resist their perspective because they think their children is still immature. And so they use their own perspective and their own view on things to control their children. And the last criteria is to establish a good kid standard. Um, so it will emphasize that, like the parents will emphasize that good children always listen to their parents, respect their parents and obey their parents. And the only that they will say a good kid does not dispute with their parents and they will be really respectful to their parents. And when their children are having a dispute with them, like it is usually, we will really hear those sayings. And in this circumstance that children's own moral, own morals and beliefs are changed according to their parents' speech and standards. And this is the power of mind control that people do not realize they are being changed, but still believe that their own behaviors are wrong. And referring back to the Confucianism, all the four categories devoted to the values that parents are always the right one. And parents are the people who define all their standards and what the kids do is only to obey. And what is pathetic that like it influenced the social interaction between parents and children. Like the parents don't even realize that they have misunderstood the initial intention of the cultural values. And they did not realize that their behaviors are leading their children to become more and more depressive and un unconfident. And when the children grow up, they realize the meaning behind their parents and they will avoid the interaction with them because of the words that they heard from them. And the parents do not even recognize that, like why their children do not like to talk with them in the like when they grow up. So from those behaviors, we can conclude that parents do not see their children as an independent person, but as a necessary that should obey everything they talk about and try to change their children in order to correspond to their own will. And in conclusion, I think it is important for people to reflect that sometimes we are overreacting to regarding to their cultural values. And I believe cultural values exist to regulate the self but not as a tool to manage how others should behave. And we should not interpret it respect as a hierarchical concept. We're not saying that respect is a bad thing, but rather it, it is an excellent behavior to follow and people, but, but we should not interpret it as a hierarchical concept. And people should manage their behaviors and remind themselves to respect others, but not use it as a moral kidnapping tool to reject suggestions from others. And it is a misinterpretation of the initial intention of Confucianism and the influence social interactions in a negative way within the social context. And lastly, I want to emphasize that parents should keep in mind that their, children's, uh, their children is an independent unit and they have their own personalities and right to decide for their own life. And what parents could do is to make, like, to have suggestions, provide suggestions rather than comments, um, like, not to force them to change their behaviors, but telling them, like, what I think of, but you can have your own decisions. And lastly, I want to emphasize the conclusion of my study that the cultural values significant impact the social interaction in China. So here are the references of the study, and thank you.